Um, you got a solid next. one for us, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. So um, I we've kind of kicked this can down the road a few times, but I thought we'd take a crack at it. Um, so this is a, there was a an article written by Derek D called "A Pythonic Guide to Solid Design Principles." Um, now, are, are you familiar with what the solid uh, principles are? Single responsibility, open, closed, Liskov substitution in something, and dependency injection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot what the so, I is. I is interface segregation principle. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I had to look it, on that one. I cheated. So on our on our um, I I always have to look it up, but I uh, I was curious. So this the article is interesting. It's an inter- interesting article. So the idea is um, is taking this um, all these principles. And um, I'm gonna have to go through and spell check these. But uh, anyway, the in there, there's been I don't even know where these came from, but they're this idea that if you're doing object oriented design, you should have solid object oriented design. And I I don't know if I completely buy it. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure that I don't. But okay. the this um, this article goes in and also talks about kind of relates each one to the Zen of Python as well. And sometimes it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, and then also just really how to apply these principles in uh, programming in, in code coding in Python. And um, I'm, I guess I'll just say so my, my take on uh, solid design principles are there are things that are good to know about. And if you, um, and there's lots of different design principles to know about, and these are some of them. And in, developing object system systems with objects and all python uses objects whether you think it does or not um it uh, you it's good to if you look at some code and it's hard to maintain um and it or it already is hard to maintain maybe some of these principles might help refactor so that it's uh it's in a in a better state but um blindly following these rules actually i think could possibly make your code even worse um, is my my take on it yeah well I'm, I'm a big fan of design patterns actually i really love the concept of design patterns and one of the things i love about them is once you start to think of code and design patterns you can think of trade-offs and higher level building blocks than just functions or here's a class you could think oh this is a you know, this is going to be an interface. And so what that means is here's a benefit and here's a drawback. And do we want to go down that path? Right. Or I I like that it lets you think in bigger abstractions than just lines of code or functions. So I'm I'm a huge fan of that. But one problem that I've seen a lot when people adopt design, first, when they learn design patterns, they become super passionate, like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. It could be so easy to go. All right. Well, these are going into everything. Like every chance I can get to use the visitor pattern, it's going in and you're like, wait, 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 wait. The visitor pattern is super complicated and it only like solves a cool problem, but it is really not obvious or easy to maintain. So the problem it solves had better be glaring and massive or you're just making it worse. And so I don't know, I see this kind of stuff as salt and pepper and paprika. It's code is better with it, but that doesn't mean it should be ultra doused at it you know what i mean because then it's not better anymore it's all of a sudden like this is a really cool study in design patterns i have no idea what's going on like for example dependency injection like there's a few places where dependency injection like at certain layers might be cool and you could apply it and it's really neat but if you do it everywhere you're like i have no idea what anything is or how any of them get to each other i just know that this is a complete mess and i need a debugger to even figure out what's happening all the time and like that's kind of my feeling about solid, especially in Python. It's definitely my feeling about design patterns. What do you think? I, I have definitely have to agree. One of the, and one of the things that, um, well, I, don't, I think I agree. Um, the um, uh, design, both design patterns and the idea around solid are, they were really developed for other languages. And I yeah. don't, I don't think they're definitely not the first tools that I reach for, for making Python uh, more maintainable and uh, designed better. Like for instance, the um, like you mentioned, uh, dependency injection. Um, this is, uh, as far as I can tell, dependency injection is it should be used very sparingly in Python. And uh, there are great 
great ways to examples. Um, like for instance, in an application that where you you don't want to depend on a particular database style or database, you can you can set up the the d database configuration uh, early on and then pass that to the system. But I, the 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 problems with looking up if you want to know more about solid and more about design patterns, almost all the examples are going to be not appropriate for Python because they're going to be like, you know, uh, Java examples or C sharp examples or something. Right. And, uh, um, so that's the static language examples. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also so, think that they get the way they get used, they get used in this like overly general overcomplicated way. So for example, dependency injection, I've got something I can maybe have a data access layer and I want to be able to configure the type of database access it uses. And I want to be able to configure the logging messages that it can send or whether or not it logs to a file or at all, right? You could take that and require everyone to always pass a database core instance to it and always pass a logger thing to it. Or you could just have the data access layer have defaults and then you override them only if you need to, usually in testing. So you yeah. can set them up so you always have to feel the pain of this structure, or you can set them up so you only even know that it exists if you need to look into it and change it. And I find a lot of times it gets used in the, the hard way only. But the problem yeah. is there's like a little bit of hard here and a little bit of hard there. Then you compose it, it's a little bit more hard. And at the top, you're like, we need 20 things to like create this class and get it started. And I don't even know what they're for. They gotta be passed way down. And like, now we need IOC. Now I can't figure out where stuff is coming. There's just a lot of like layers that it adds on. So I don't know, salt I think is my best, like spice. Yeah, and sometimes simple is good. Sometimes just a cookie is good. Yeah, well, you're right. And you can always... <laughs> that's right cookies good you can always start with just write it the simple way and then add this stuff if you need it right yeah do, do you are you really feeling the pain that these kind of patterns would solve okay bring it in right you got refactoring tools you got tests the, right yeah and the other the other thing with the the i mean solid includes things like the liskov substitutability principle how arrogant does that sound i mean <laughs> it's one of the things that just i have a problem with is it just it reeks of I'm smarter than you because I know about this stuff. And yeah. I just don't like that. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool article though. And the solid principles are good to know, even if you're not using them everywhere, it's good to know, like these are some design principles and I'm choosing to use them here and I'm choosing not to use them there because yeah. right. Yeah. Do, do it conscious. Thank you for watching this segment of the Python bytes podcast. This video was made during the recording of the full episode. Visit pythonbytes.fm and get the whole story. Subscribe to the podcast and get the entire episode delivered to your phone. Please support our work by taking one of the courses at pythonbytes.fm slash courses or learning PyTest with Brian's book at pythonbytes.fm slash PyTest. Finally, visit our sponsor shown on the screen here. Visit the link on the screen and get the special offer for Python Bytes and YouTube listeners. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.